Welcome back to the Beginner's Guide to the Modern Theory of Polarization, a series of modules to help you understand how the electric polarization is defined, calculated and measured in bulk periodic solids. Brought to you by Schrodinger's Kittens Productions. Here we'll discuss the solutions to the exercise of Module 4. At the end of Module 4, we were asked to list methods that we know of for measuring polarization and to think about whether they measure absolute values of polarization or rather polarization differences. The first example that comes to mind is the pyroelectric current measurement, which exploits the fact that the polarization of a ferroelectric material depends on the temperature typically with this kind of form below the Curie temperature, Tc. So as the ferroelectric is heated, its polarization goes down from a large value, P1, say, to a smaller value, P2. The bound charge on the surface of the ferroelectric is compensated by free charges, which can come either from the atmosphere or from an electrode at the surface, for example. We'll talk more about these in the next module. Fewer charges are needed to compensate the smaller polarization than the larger polarization. And the surface charges that are released on heating are counted to obtain a measure of the difference in polarization, delta P, between polarization P1 and polarization P2. A second technique is piezo force microscopy. Here, an electric field is applied to a polar material using a conductive tip on the end of a cantilever. The electric field deforms the polar material through the piezoelectric effect, and the deformation is detected as it in turn deflects the tip. Opposite orientations of the polarization relative to the electric field, cause opposite deformations and deflections, making piezo force microscopy particularly suitable for imaging ferroelectric domains. It does not, however, provide a measure of absolute values of polarization. A third method, the Sawyer Tower measurement, will be the topic of the next module, and we will see that it also yields differences in polarization. Now you're ready to move on to module five in the series, where we'll formalize the concept of the surface charge associated with the polarization, as well as the correspondence between the results of polarization measurements and the differences in polarization that we obtained theoretically. Thanks for listening.